<clears throat> Good evening and hello from the Paley Center for Media in Los Angeles to all of you joining on the live stream from Yahoo. I'm Maureen Reedy, President and CEO of the Paley Center for Media, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the closing night of our Paley Fest Fall TV previews. I'm in a room full of TV fans who just enjoyed a special clip package celebrating 15 seasons of the series we honor tonight, CSI Crime Scene Investigation. To moderate tonight's conversation, we're delighted to welcome Entertainment Weekly's editor-at-large, Lynette Rice, back to the Paley Center. Lynette is a veteran of several Paley Fest panels, most recently a special evening with Craig Ferguson. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Lynette Rice. Right. Hello. Uh, uh, my name is Lynette Rice. I cover television for Entertainment Weekly, uh, and I've been doing it for 15 years, and gosh, it's such a privilege. I get to do so many cool things, but remarkably, only a handful of things stand out. Here are two. I had the exclusive exit interview with Billy Peterson when he broke all of our hearts and left the show. A moment of tear. And, <laughs> And I was on the set when Marg Helgenberger gave her final goodbye. And let me tell you, that girl was a blubbering fool. <laughs> but now I get to have one more memory. I get to be on the stage when the cast comes together one final time. So let me introduce them. You know him as Henry Andrews. This is John Wellner. David Phillips, played by David Berman. <laughs> Executive producer Jonathan Littman. <laughs> One of the great women behind the show, co-creator and executive producer, Ann Donahue. You just met this crazy guy, code creator and executive producer, Anthony Zyker. <laughs> the other great female behind the show, sorry, I'm partial, co-creator and executive producer, Carol Mendelson. <laughs> he plays David Hodges, Wallace Langham. Morgan Brody, otherwise known as Elizabeth Harnois. Gosh, he never left the coroner's office. Dr. Al Robbins, Robert David Hall. Now you're supposed to be there. Okay, fine. <laughs> Captain Jim Brass, Paul Guilfoyle. <laughs> Sarah Seidel, AKA Georgia Fox. <laughs> Be still my heart, Gil Grissom. William Peterson. <laughs> a, <laughs> a bona fide star, the leading lady, Catherine Willows, Mark Helgenberger. <laughs> he plays D.B. Russell, Ted Danson. Greg Sanders, everyone, Eric Zamanda. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so bad. Um, I don't, he doesn't really need a title, Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry. He, he wasn't on the cue card. That's my uh. excuse. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. Um, all right. It's so surprising to think that this all began with a tram driver in Vegas. And so, and then, by the way, this was a guy who taught himself how to speak many languages so he could say hello to all the many tourists who came on his tram. <laughs> so, Anthony, before we get into all of this, take us back. Take us way back, and in the true spirit of the title song, Who Were You? Who, who, who? <laughs> <laughs> I was just an only child from Las Vegas who liked to play pinball and liked to hang out in casinos. Um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was watching a show called New Detectives on Discovery Channel and saw the forensic docudrama about Linda Sobeck, who was the Raider cheerleader who was, who was killed, and they pulled a long blonde hair follicle out of that headrest, and the guy was like at the Cessna's voice, and he was like, the long hair follicle means that there's a tag cell attached, which means she was killed in the struggle. And I'm like, what? Uh, and that's really how I learned that the body was the perfect specimen. And that was quite the tweak I needed to really reinvent the cop genre. And the rest was history. Jonathan and, and, and uh, uh, where's the man, Jerry? Where did Jerry go? Where did we put him? Okay, Jerry. I, so what did you think of Anthony when he came in? What did you think about giving this nobody a, sh a show, a, a deal, a, a, a career? What, what was your thoughts when he first came in? Yeah. It's over now, so it's all well, no it, I think if you'd all been there, you'd have hired him right away. I mean, he gives the most energetic, entertaining pitch you've ever seen. I mean, he prances up and down the office. He never sits down. He talks a mile a minute. But it always goes down to the idea. It's a fantastic idea. You really hit on something. And then with him and, and Carol and Ann, just the, the material was fantastic. And all these people are up here because of them. Because if you write really great stuff, you get great actors. And that's what we have, and that's what made this such a huge success all these years. The writing staff and our actors, uh, you know, with the, with the great words, you get great people, and they're sitting in front of me, and I'm really lucky to be here. Jonathan, you've got to tell the story. So, I mean, I know some of you already heard it, but I can't hear it enough because it's where great TV is made of. How did you sell it? When did you call Nina? Tell me that, that, the I, day of that call. I called Nina begging uh, her to hear the pitch because everyone else had passed. Um, and we were down to one. And uh, after Fox had passed, ABC had passed, NBC wasn't interested in hearing it. Um, and uh, I said to Nina, I don't know if you'll buy it. It's really important to me that you hear it, but I can guarantee you the most entertaining 20 minutes you'll ever have. <laughs> and we went in and pitched to Nina's little office at CBS where I said to Anthony, you can't walk around, there's not enough room. <laughs> um, I also said to him walking in, good luck, this is our last shot. Yeah. <laughs> Motivation. Motivation. Uh, and uh, he pitched his heart out and in, in the incredible Anthony way that he pitches, Nina lit up and she bought it in the room. Wow. And I won't even... I and never forget, we walked to the, to the elevator and the elevator shut and he put his arm, hand right here and he said, she bought it in the room. That's how you do it, my friend. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. It was really cool. And, and, and she, she did. She snatched, she snatched it up. She spent $35,000 on the script. I love telling that story, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so for Ann and Carol, one of the defining things about this show was how it never got too personal. We never really went home with these folks. We never really found out the dirty details of who they are. When was that decided, and how, how challenging was that to continue with that throughout the many years? We didn't go home with our characters but I still think it, we were driven by characters. And if you watch um, the first season, yeah, we, got, we did a lot of cases in, with science and forensics, but we learned a lot about Grissom. We learned the songs he liked. We learned that he was in the pilot, who he was dating. He may not have dated again for many years. Do you remember that, Billy? Yes, you were. You were dating the tech, not yep. you. Grissom. <laughs> You asked her out. <laughs> well, what does dating mean? I don't think I went out with her. <laughs> that means dating. You go out. We actually thought you slept with her. <laughs> this has been going on for 15 years. In the Midwest, dating is dinner. And so, just from Chicago. <laughs> <But we> also... <laughs> You're not <that's> true. <laughs> She's still laughing. Nebraska. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there, you did. Uh, so he did have some personal life then, and he did. He did, and think of Catherine Willows. We knew that she was a single mother. We kind of saw her sister pull up in front of the lab in the pilot. 
I don't know who that actress was, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, when Marg was doing one of our first episodes, her character forgot to pick up her daughter, and Marg, being a great mother, said, I, I just don't buy it. And we had to drag Liz Devine, a real CSI, who did forget to pick up her kid. So we would always bring the real law enforcement out, and they would, thank God, verify for us. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have to beg them. <laughs> and they worked the night shift. Right, right. All right, so you all have been in our living rooms for so long, so we feel like we know you quite well, but I'm very curious to find out what you thought of each other, at least initially. So if you don't mind, oh. wait, yeah. <laughs> I want you to go back. Ted, you won't have to go back as far. But I want you to go back to that first year. I want you to turn to the right person. Well, for him, it's going to be different. But I want you to turn to the person on your right, and I want you to try to recall your first impression of this person. Oh, my God. Your first impression. <laughs> so, Eric, you get to go with Ted. That's an easy one. It's okay. so fresh in your mind. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> As you can see, he's a really sweet guy. <laughs> but I, I, I never was worried, you know, because we all, you know, knew him as being such a, a, a fun and, and warm person on, on TV. But to, to see how even much warmer and, and more funny he is in person was, was a big surprise to me because uh, um, there, was never, there was never a tense moment on set with this guy. And, uh, and he, he definitely, like, made everyone feel at home. So. All right, Ted, you do Marg now. Marg. I didn't hear a word you were saying. I was practicing when I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Go. <laughs> okay, I saw, you, I, I saw your work so beforehand, so I was a we fan. We were in that miniseries. Exactly. Yeah. You, you uh, did we you win an award. Or you, did, you were incredible in that. So I knew you were a really, really good actor. But the moment I really met you on set, I was so terrified that I was on CSI and walking down a hallway where we had to say the entire thing in one take. That, yeah. that's pretty much, then, then I remember going, watching you, uh, because it's so technical, you rarely do you get through an entire speech without having to go back a little bit. And I watched you, you would take it back a syllable and keep, I was like, oh, my God, you have this down so well, you know exactly where to go back to. Twelve years. There you go. You are the most elegant, gracious, welcoming uh, lady that I've worked with. You are astounding to be around. You really are. What you, what you, see, what you see is what you get. You, she is really an elegant, gracious, always kind lady. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. Next. All right, Mark, now Billy. <laughs> What'd you think of Billy, Mark? What'd you think of Billy? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a few years prior to um, working together, um, a few people had said to me, have you ever worked with Billy Peterson? You guys, I think, would have great chemistry. And I said, I haven't, but I would love to, because I think he's great, a wonderful actor, and I just, uh, so, and then that day arrived, and um, you were so, um, you had commented, because I had just done th that movie, Aaron Brockovich had just come out, and um, when we were shooting the pilot, and you would come up to me, and you said, you know, so many people have said you're, like, amazing in this movie, and I haven't seen it yet, but, you know, I can't, but, and you were, like, so effusive, and it was made me feel so damn good, and, and you were so excited and enthusiastic about CSI, and as we all were, but I think your your energy and your enthusiasm is so infectious, and it just gets us all going, and we all want to, you know, not that we wouldn't bring our A game, but but you know, we just bring it with more enthusiasm because of you, and um, it just was it, it was so much fun. Remember, we walking around with those stupid cases, you know, like. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but they were. <laughs> <laughs> well, we refined the cases over the years, but at the time we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We had those big badges on those nasty chains yeah, yeah. and stuff, and and um, so I can't imagine have taken this ride with anybody else. And it was twelve, no, nine and a half years, right? You were on nine and a half years of just joy and laughs and tears and thanks, Billy. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> Did we meet at lunch? <laughs> you drove me crazy. Maybe I should talk about it. Oh, <laughs> I, you. I didn't really care for you. Oh. Oh. For the first six months. He drove me crazy. For the first how many months? Like six. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know. It just the holidays happened and I realized we were kind of stuck together for didn't a while. Didn't I meet you at lunch though? Didn't we have lunch first? Yes, you invited me to lunch and That's a nice way to meet. <laughs> with Anthony. I went to lunch with you and Anthony, yeah. And you really? guys talked about heads and popcorn containers yeah, and popcorn and bodies and trunks. Wow. Remember that episode? We never did that. We, we never did that one. Uh, you came in after the pilot. We had shot the pilot in the spring, and then we came back. And uh, we, I remember having lunch with you and walking out with Anthony. I think we were in Larchmont, weren't we? I think we were. Yep. Long time ago. And I was like, okay, she's cool. <laughs> she's cool. And, and from that point on, once we started episodes together, which was right after that. Like five um, days later. It, it, was, <laughs> it was like, okay, I, every time I was able to do a scene with you, it was like falling off a log. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. I, think, I think that... Grissom fell for you because you got him, you know, and uh, and you got me too. Oh my God! <laughs> All right, Georgia, not to the man oh to your right. God. Yeah, and thank Although, you. Yeah. And it became so, I, I, I adore you so much, and, and really, honestly, thank you. I, it was the greatest trip, the longest, strangest, greatest trip, you know, to misquote Jerry Garcia a little bit. So thank you very much, and, and I love you, and all of you, and Mr. Guilfoyle. <laughs> uh, I also knew, I knew your work. You'd been in about 30 movies that I loved, and um, coming so to the show. Didn't love? No. Okay. <laughs> And you were this movie star. You'd never done a TV show before. You kind of, you were so glamorous. You kind of jet set it in from New York City, you know, and you're. In and, coach. Well. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't share that part of the story. Uh, your amazing wife is a, a, a world travel choreographer. I learned so much for you. you. You, to me, you know, there's. I don't think there's such a thing as somebody's not a real actor or a true actor. People say that a lot, like, oh, well, so-and-so's a real actor. Like, some of us aren't real actors. I think everybody, if you, if you hope to be an actor, and you are, you're very passionate about what you do, but you were a real actor, and you, you, you have this New York sensibility and grit and down-to-earth, and you took risks, and, and you were just so classy and, like, you know, kind of Austin Powers. That's how I... <laughs> <laughs> Georgia, that, that is so kind and sweet to say. You know, I must say about you, you have, um, you are always the, the heart of this whole group to me. I mean, other people I could rely on to tell a joke with or people who aren't even here to have fun with, um, they didn't make the cut, I guess. I don't know some of the other actors. Um, but uh, Georgia always had, uh, George, Georgia always really had the biggest heart and always the warmth of a real human being. And thank you for that, always. Thank you. Okay, so, right now. now, George Eads, I, I just want to tell you, thank you. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. You know. I know you love me. New York Brits. I know. No. No, Ron. Guilfoyle, them fighting words, pal. This is my good buddy, really, honestly, because we share a lot of things about... Uh, you know, growing up, we could always relate to the, you know, the same generational stuff. It was always fun to see David. You know, first of all, I think the hardest thing I had to do was, am I supposed to call you all three names, like Robert, <laughs> David Hall? You know, David so, Hall. I know. So I, Robert is my real the, name. I hate it. I know. Okay? So I, I, <laughs> I, I really learned real fast to call him David. And David, uh, I've always admired your enthusiasm for the work. I mean, when we would get together to do some scenes, which we did rarely because we didn't intersect very much in the, the coroner and the detective, 
But when we did, uh, we would get really kind of fired up and work on it with a lot of energy and effort and, uh, and to try to, you know, dig out the truth of it. And we had a lot of fun in that. And I always admired your ability and enthusiasm to kind of do this work that we, that we did for so many years. Because David and I, when we started CSI, we were both 21. <laughs> and here's what happened. I had an afro. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for all your gifts and your musical gifts and everything. Thank you, David. Thank you. Robert, would you address the gorgeous woman behind you, Elizabeth? Do you remember when you met her? What? I do. Oh, yes. Do I get Wally or Elizabeth? You would oh, yeah, do Wally. I'll do both. <laughs> <laughs> do Wally. Why well, Wally do Elizabeth? I in the wrong order because of some weird stuff that happened before. But I know. It kind of threw me yeah. off. That's why Jerry wasn't asking. Right before I started CSI, I worked on a movie with Paul called The Negotiator. And I was in awe of Guilfoyle. I uh, still sort of am, but it's, uh, <laughs> he's a remarkable guy. But the, I'll start with Wally. I guess I'll let you do Elizabeth here. Wally Langham, I loved on uh, Larry Sanders, the Gary Shandling show. But I, I don't follow TMZ or any of that stuff too, too closely. But where are you I, going with this? I was, I was a little nervous. I'd heard. Wally might punch me in the face when I met him, and he turned out to be the nicest guy, and he's become a friend and a mentor and just a, a guy that I can rely on when I have difficult questions. He's a, a mensch and a great actor, so Thanks, thank you, Paul. Pal. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Thank you. And you and I actually did meet over lunch. Did we? <laughs> yeah. But it was a catered lunch that CSI paid for. <laughs> Nobody invited me out to lunch. Oh, That's okay. so sad. Okay. Okay. I think I gave Elizabeth... Didn't I give you a potted plant the first day you were... Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. So. Wally, what about Elizabeth? Start with Elizabeth. Do you still have that plant? She smoked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was the best Anybody could receive, that's all I could. <laughs> I vaguely remember when you first came on the show. Um, but <laughs> I, I vaguely remember anything. That's my problem. Um, uh, but I remember, like, what a firebrand you were. Like, you were young, blonde, like, took no shit. And um, you really, yeah, it was really like, wow, we need this. We need this new blood. We got to get the lab going, you know, yeah. and uh, and then you know they try to throw us together once in a while and have a kiss, and yeah. that never worked out. That didn't work out. <laughs> Nobody that, liked that. that. Didn't work out. I didn't mind it. I didn't, I thought, I didn't I thought, mind it. I thought you. I thought you. You had a nice. It was good. I do okay. <laughs> I do okay. Yeah. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, for an old guy, I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You're not an old guy. Yeah, you but what a great actress. I mean, you. It, it was it, you know to step into this machine that was already, you know, in motion and to carve out something that was completely unique to, you know, it's just a testament to what a great actress you are. Well, I appreciate that. And I think anyone who had to be passed to me was like in the trickiest situation because I was the most recent addition. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just so grateful that I got to be a part of something that I was such a fan of for so many years. And I'm so... I'm such a huge fan of all of the people I've gotten to work with, but now I've become so Who's close. your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I did get a really good plant from... Elizabeth, <laughs> oh, um, can you do David? You had to have a good first impression of the man down here. Yes. Um, this guy and I are very good friends. Um, first impression... You know, it's hard because I was nervous when I first joined because it was like being like the new kid in school. And so it's hard for me with for the first impression. All I know is that he was warm and welcoming and he's cooked me some of the best dinners I've ever had. <laughs> and we are each other's ear for all sorts of things. And he really has become one of my dearest friends. So, you know, you, how many of us can say that at a job we've joined, we've gained something like that? And I've gained that with many of these people. But if you ask me about this man, that's what I would say. And he's a great actor. Yeah. 
All right, last one. Make it a good one. Good guy. <laughs> about John Wilder? Yeah, yes. So, we'll save the best season for two of CSI, I wanted to take an acting class. Uh, another one, I hadn't been in class in a couple years, so I asked Billy if he could recommend a teacher. And he did a gentleman named Jeff Perry, who's a great actor, had a Steppenwolf. And uh, first day of class, uh, John and I were both kind of staring at the same pretty girl in class. We kind of bonded over a crush on her. <laughs> and then quickly realized that John was the best actor in class. Mm -hmm. And it was a good class with like seasoned actors. Everyone worked. But he was clearly the best actor in class. He kind of just, everything he did was nuanced and interesting and fun. So I always try to gravitate towards talented people. And John needed a job, mm -hmm. and I do the re I do the research for I do the research for CSI. I've done the research for CSI since um, since right after I joined right after we filmed the pilot, and I was acting more and more in the show. So um, Carol um, was and Anne were nice enough to let me hire John for eight hours a week, <laughs> and he was amazing. And then that quickly went to 15 hours, then 20 hours, and um, and then it was a full time job. And we are settling into the job, and I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll speed this up, but right as things were going really well, uh, John said he was quitting the business. He was quitting acting, and he was quitting the business, he was going to do something else, which I was devastated because we had a really nice research team going. And um, anyways, one thing led to another. Uh, he ended up getting a role in something else. He didn't quit. He came on, came back to CSI, and then did an episode as a... The Evil Zookeeper episode of CSI, <laughs> and and he was so good that they brought him back uh, as another character. He did the show for for 12 years. But John and I have gone on to create a an entertainment research business called Entertainment Research Consultants. We work together every day. You know, officiated uh, his wedding. There was bachelor party. I mean, he's my best friend. So to get to work with your best friend every single day is is, is pretty amazing, both uh, on camera and and behind it. So I feel very blessed to know John. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so John, since you don't have somebody to weigh in on, I want you to take the next question. What was it like bringing... No one's loved on Eric yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this is so embarrassing. John, what do you think about Eric? He's so dreamy. I know, right? Right? I'm telling you. <laughs> I started season five, so the show was a big hit already, and I was super nervous to come in. I, actually, one of my first scenes was with Eric, and I had to walk down the hall and tell him how much I appreciated his work, and I think I asked you where you get your hair cut in the scene, so I thought my character maybe had a crush on him or something. I didn't know where they were going with it, and he was just so nice the whole time. Like, could have been mean, never mean. We've become great friends. He's just the best. Such a great actor, so kind, and everyone loves Eric. It's right? so dreamy. <laughs> the dreamiest. Yes. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for your patience with that exercise. All right. One more time. One more time. Okay. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what, so you start with this. What was it like coming all back together to do this movie? What was it like on the set? Was it back to work just like, you know, just like normal? How, how did it feel? Uh, well, I, I think a few of us were all on set together for the first time. Uh, Paul, Georgia, and Billy, and, and Marg and I in, in a, a much smaller AV lab than we were used to. But, but uh, <laughs> the, the energy that, that filled that lab made the lab seem much bigger. And uh, I mean, there was so much laughter and reminiscing that it was actually kind of hard to get focused and, 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 and work on the scene. But once we did, it was just like the band getting back together and everyone kind of playing all the right notes. But, but throughout the course of the three weeks, I mean, it was, it was so much fun and so nostalgic and, um, and just uh, beautiful. And I'm just so grateful that we got the opportunity to do it so we could all see each other and, and work with, with Anthony again and, and a lot of the same crew. But, but mostly, I mean, I, I felt like we were really doing something for all the people that, that stood by us all these years. It felt like we were giving something back because, I mean, nobody really had to be there. Everyone was there on their own accord, and uh, and I think that that's why it, it turned out so well. Billy, when you left, did you think that this day would come? Did you expect that part of the deal of you leaving is you'd come back and help say goodbye? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but I want to say that, you know, I, first of all, I want to thank Mr. Moonves and Nina Tassler and all the people at CBS and Jerry and Jonathan for bringing this back together. And I got a call. I was out of town. And Jonathan and Anthony called and said, we want to do uh, a finale. And I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because I had been gone for seven years, you know, and I missed them, all of you. And, uh, you know, I, I, missed, uh, I missed Catherine Willows and Sarah Seidel, mm -hmm. you know. I missed the characters as well as the actors, you know. So, and I, you know, without the opportunity to have done this, we couldn't have gotten, we could have gone to a party together, we could have gone to a ball game together, but it would never have been what this was, uh, daunting as it was to try and do this as fast as we had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to say goodbye to each other and our characters and also to say goodbye to the fans who have been miraculous to us, you know, un unexpected and unbelievably appreciated by all of us, obviously. And uh, I do want to thank CBS for that opportunity because I don't think it happens very often. Georgia, you and I had an interesting discussion. We're, you know, doing the press for this movie. You, you had, a, you talked about the relationship that you had with the audience, and you thought people really didn't dig Sarah because of the relationship. Um, first of all, Lynette, I want to thank you so much for being so uh, amazing to all of us and loyal to this show since its inception. And I was so excited that you were going to be here tonight. And thank, so thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I'm glad that you asked me that because I think I, you know, and I can be dramatic. And so <laughs> I think what I meant was I, I, that I think I have a, tons and tons of people love Sarah Seidel. I think that, that of the characters on the show, she may be the least liked. She may have the most people that dislike her. And um, so not to say that she, what, she isn't, hasn't been beloved and, and, and followed and, and, and have an enormous fan base. And I'm so grateful for that, I think. Um, so yeah. You guys totally to dug say. her, right? You told me. <laughs> Sarah can be difficult, you know, she's, she can be overly, <laughs> you know, and, and it is so cool, I, you know, to play this character, you know what I mean, and that, and, and that she is a character, and, but she is, she's very focused, she has poor social skills, she can be way too serious, she, she won't ever give up, she'll get stuck on something and not give up until it's settled, and she never gives up on love, you know, like just, you know, like a steady, steady mule. <laughs> Mark, I love her. I love her. I mean, this is so much. Mark, how many years did you deal with questions? Are are, are Catherine and Gail ever going to get together? Did, did that go away pretty quickly, or did that last for a while? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I I still get people asking me on Twitter about it. You know, but um, I, I would. I don't think it lasted that long. Maybe. Well, it's five seasons a long time? That's what, five or six? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Why did um, it not feel right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, dear. That's why. You know, uh, I think it was more fun this way, actually, that we didn't ever, you know, have any kind of romantic uh, connection because we we had uh, uh, I used to talk about it all the time. We were like this old married couple that uh, without the sex, but we just would have we had all the the fun and with the companionship. Now we're the old married couple. We weren't the old married couple. Before. We were the middle aged married yes. couple. <laughs> but anyway, we. We had a relationship it is that, as though we'd seemed like we'd been together for many, many years. We just, I think, you and I connected um, that way immediately, and which uh, lent itself to just the easy, breezy relationship we had. And I, 
I don't know. It was just more, I think, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel, know what I'm I saying. I feel also point. that they, they were two characters, two people that had come through whatever they'd come through to get to where they were, and they were very different. And, yeah. you know, they, they understood worlds. things in completely different ways. And I think they appreciated that about each other. I think Grissom needed Catherine in that lab. I, he needed her sensibility, which he couldn't ever. So by having us not be together in that way made us partners and I think made the, the show stronger. Now and the yeah, characters I, stronger. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, yeah, I you think have to be careful who you go to bed with. <laughs> I love the, these work relationships that are so intimate. Like even looking back here at the relationships, like, you know, people who, still say that? men and women <laughs> can't be friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially you guys. <laughs> no, but men and women can't be friends. You can, you can work together or whatever, but you can't be friends. I, I, of course, I have some of the deepest, most meaningful friendships for me are, are sitting in this room right now, and, and most of them are guys. And so I think it was really cool to reflect that on the show, that, 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 that we were in these deep trenches together from time to time. We could count on each other. We had each other's back, and it didn't always have to be sexual. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And, and brother-sister relationships. I have millions of questions, but I'm sure you do too, and you're more important. So who has a question for this incredible cast? Let's start here, right here in the beginning. Hi. Uh, my question's for the producers, writers, and the actors. Um, over the years, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> for everybody. Everyone talk at once. <laughs> My question is for everybody. <laughs> but over the years, you guys have had a lot of really good guest stars and guest directors. Uh, can you speak on any memorable performances or direction that you've had over the years that you want to talk about? No, Tara, Tara, Tara. I, I think for um, all of us, I think having Quentin Tarantino direct uh, the season five uh, finale, which was supposed to be a single episode and uh, the script kept growing and so we <laughs> so we ended up with a two hour which uh, CBS was a little upset about because mm -hmm. we you know end of the season there's not a lot of money left and uh, <laughs> but it was it was one of the, I, the greatest experiences of all of our lives because we just kept we had to get to 87 minutes to have a two hour and Billy and Marg kept asking us every day, when does hiatus start? <laughs> <laughs> and I would say when I we get to, that. Uh, <laughs> I do, because <laughs> I would run to the editor and we would just, we'd say when you, we get to 87 minutes and 20 seconds. And, uh, but Tarantino, he, he was incredible and he wrote it, co-wrote it with us. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you broke it in the room with us <laughs> yes. in like an hour. He came in with a Starbucks cup, hair to the moon, a uh, radio under his arm, and he's sitting there pitching, and next thing you know, like, stuff's flying on the board, and I'm like, he's breaking this thing right now. Like, like Edward Scissorhands. And, um, and literally, it's like, and, and he was like, and then, then you know, the, these guys buried, and Grissom finds him, and he says, Poncho, and then, <laughs> and the next thing you know, you know, the, the bombs don't go off, and if we did that, I don't know, that, that could be cool. <laughs> And that, that's how it went down. Yeah. It sounds a lot like him. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can you, can you say, was working with Justin Bieber the greatest experience of your life? I, I mean, would it's over now. that question for our crew. All right. <laughs> I already told the press. Talk to them. Well, what, working with Taylor Swift was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Taylor was, Swift? She was amazing. She was, uh, she was shot, like, right between her breasts, like, right in her sternum. And I had, like, many hours where I had to very carefully examine the wound. <laughs> and you know, I'm like, oh, this is the most famous woman on the earth right now, and, and I want to make sure I don't do anything which, you know. Do no harm. Do no harm. That's a, not, not, that is the first directive of the corner. But so you touched no her. You got yeah, very carefully, very carefully. <laughs> yeah. But she was so nice and so gracious, and I remember the last day of set, she uh, had boxes and boxes of CDs, and she had told the crew that if you have kids, and you, they want to meet me, have them come the last day, and I'll sign and I'll give CDs away to any kid who wants it. And uh, I remember we had uh, one of our, our standards named Brad, 
asked her for an autograph for uh, his daughter and said, oh, where's your, and, she, and Taylor said, oh, where's your daughter? You should, you should, I'd love to meet her. And said, oh, she's in, we're divorced. Her mother and I are divorced and she's in Canada with her mom. And Taylor said, wait a second, I have an idea. She grabbed a piece of paper and she said, what is your daughter's name? Brad uh, told her the daughter's name, wrote, hi, Jessica, wish you were here. Love, Taylor. And held it up, <coughs> took a picture and sent it to her. And I thought, oh, right, that's why you're a huge, huge star. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty amazing. All right, next question. Who's got a question? Right here. Could you speak a little bit about how your relationship with Elizabeth Devine started? Because I was lucky enough to go to the last seminar she did before she started your show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I was talking to her and said, you should be doing a TV show. <laughs> so, we, well, we, yeah. needed, we needed a CSI because we literally didn't know what a CSI said when they got to the scene. <laughs> like, we're like, do you say sorry for your loss? <laughs> 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 you know, we really didn't get it. And I kept calling them cosmologists or something. And, but I, so we had seen it. Uh, we had, you said you'd never say that in public again. I know, I know, and I keep doing it. Uh, but we were doing a story that was ripped from the headlines about a, um, a quadruple murder in La Puente. And that was, so we decided on that. And, we thought we'd figure that out. And then uh, I went to meet Liz, because these we were all working around the clock, and she was very tired. I met her in Pasadena, and she said, I'm sorry, I've been up three days on a quadruple in La Puente. And I went, really? <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> um, so, but Liz was so real. You know, cops are storytellers, because that's their job, is they have to get the story from people that are usually insane in that moment. As Liz says on the worst day of their life, and then tell it to their boss, who tells it to their boss, who tells it. So they learn how to be storytellers. And there was a verisimilitude that was so amazing. Um, and she told us what you say at a crime scene when you arrive. You don't say, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> you say, don't touch anything. I need all five senses. Um, so that, I brought Liz back to, to my teammates, to Carol, the, the boss. And um, we fell in love. And, and um, that, that, the rest is history. She was, is fantastic. Wow. fantastic. Who's next? Who else has a question? Way back there. Hi. 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 I'm in from Las Vegas. Yay! And, but I want to speak on behalf of... <laughs> you need to commit a crime. The real Las Vegas. This poor guy. Um, and I have a question on behalf of all the geeks. I was wondering why Hodges didn't have any more perfect days. I, oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't feel bad. That, that was the best day ever. I love that episode. And I'm sure all the geeks out there watching oh. appreciate it, too. And Thanks. just wondering why, why you didn't get any more perfect days. Because he's actually an Adonis. I'm a what? Adonis. I'm an Adonis. Um, <laughs> thanks, I'll pay you later. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Um, I had so much fun doing that episode. It was really uh, um, a real triumph to, to see the, the, the lab rats uh, kind of have that those moments in the sun. It was such a great, fun time. Why, why didn't I have any more, Carol? <laughs> but, well, you got a girlfriend pretty quickly Actually, thereafter. I think, I, kissed, I think Georgia said that I've kissed more people on the show than anyone else. Yes, so. yes has hands down. You yeah. the Casanova series. Soft lips, yes. apparently. <laughs> there was the Italian supermodel. Italian supermodel. <laughs> I think you had a I lot of perfect days, that. but we just never titled the episode. That is true. Hodges, yes. second perfect day. Exactly. Yeah. And the perfect mother, Jacqueline Smith. Oh yes. God. Oh God. Crazy. <laughs> anyway, thanks for your question. I know this seems so cliche, but after 15 years, I have to wonder if it maybe happened at one time. Have you ever been confused with authority as a CSI out in the world? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, a little bit. I, when I met Ted, I, uh, Ted just joined the show, and I accompanied him to Las Vegas to, to view a real autopsy. And we got a tour of the, of the, of the morgue. 
It was pretty standard and dry. Forgive me, Ted, for telling the story. Please chime in. I love this. And um, <laughs> we were at the, the, the tour was pretty much, we hadn't seen any bodies. It was very clinical. We just, we talked to a, a coroner and we talked to an ME. And we're about to leave when our, our, our host, Dr. Gary Keldrenoff, who is the medical examiner in Clark County, uh, gives us a couple smocks and says, put these on. And these double doors open, and it was as if the director yelled action. A bone saw is turned on, <laughs> slices off a guy's skull cap. The Emmy, you know, pops off the skull cap, says, Ted, hold this. <laughs> Ted is holding the skull cap. The Emmy removes the brain. He then says, David, because I want you to take those pliers, and I want you to pull out the brain stem. And I said, you know, I'm not really a boy. <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 it'll be fine. And I'm pulling out the brainstem. Using both hands, it's hard. And I'm looking at Ted, who has a man's skull in his hands. And uh, so, yeah, maybe a little confused. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what were you thinking? Oh, I'm just vibrating. You know, it was <laughs> true. It's truly, I'm so glad I did it. I will never do it again if I can, if I can help it. Uh, but I tell you, we bonded forever. I mean, I, oh, I went upstairs, called my wife, Mary, and like sobbed. It's a huge deal what CSIs do in real life. Most of us don't have to deal with the dark. You know, we can be cheery and happy and all of that. And what you guys do and still lead your life is just astounds me. Yeah. Anyway, forever. <laughs> One more question, right here. Uh, I'm a forensic scientist, and I feel like the show. Um, I feel like the show has definitely changed the way society views the field of forensic science, and and also how us as scientists need to to present ourselves to society. How do you feel that you are perceived by? actual forensic scientists or, or the field? Oh, just tell us, please. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a, a coroner's convention, a pathologist convention in New Orleans with Brad. And uh, this was in year, what, th two? After year two. And there we were in New Orleans. I had to get an award or something for being on TV. <laughs> and, and so I had a little speech and did that. And then we went to a room, and I, all these coroners were there, and we had to meet them all. And these guys, to a man, were like, thank you. Oh. Thank you. We are finally out of the closet. People <laughs> talk to us at parties. <laughs> I can talk to girls, they'll call me back. <laughs> they think it's cool that I'm a coroner. Before CSI, people didn't, you know, was like, really, that's what you do? Okay, talk to you later. You know, so I mean, I think, I mean, I think it changed a lot uh, of, I, I know that there was a lot of universities that started doing criminology departments to have majors in criminology and, I mean, <laughs> It, it obviously affected the courts. The whole CSI effect, the lawyers have to constantly tell juries now, look, you're not going to see the graph. It's not going to look cool. <laughs> you're not going to get the results. In you know, yeah, we're not going to know. In 48 about, yeah. minutes. <laughs> there is a federal jury instruction that's called the CSI instruction that prosecutors can ask the judge to give that says you do that there's a difference between TV and real life, and you can't give the bird. You can't give the bird. <laughs> Yeah, there is. No, no. no. Um, you can't give this burden to prosecutors that they would come in with all these tests and with all these because they were losing cases because they, they, the jurors, juries were expecting to have fingerprints and hair fibers and DNA. They expected Billy Peterson. They expected Billy I Peterson. had to go. To, I had to go to jury duty uh, downtown, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my God!" Uh -huh. Old day down there, sitting in the room, waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, they brought the people into to the lawyers two who were going to voir dire the jury. And they went through five people, and then they got to me, and I just said, you know, I was sort of like going. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, one of the lawyers went, excuse me, 
are you the guy on CSI? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he said, thank you very much. We won't be needing you. <laughs> you want to dance on me? Yeah. Go ahead. Billy didn't want to go to D.C. for something, and I, I got to go and testify <laughs> before Congress about something I knew nothing about. And afterwards, there was a party with coroners and FBI, and the head FBI medical examiner came over to me, put his arm around me, and gave me a wrapped book. And I thought, oh, that's very nice. I opened it up, and it was the FBI's murder book. <laughs> the most gruesome, grotesque... Oh, book, and I gave it to Carol, hope, <laughs> hoping the writers could make some use of it, because I didn't want my wife Judy to ever see this. Yeah. <laughs> it was so horrible. Yeah. And the guy smiled, and he, he, he just was so happy to give yeah. me this book. <laughs> I, I'm an actor. I'm a actor. I'm not a yeah. medical example. Well, when we shot the pilot, wasn't it the pilot that we received that handbook on homicide investigation? Yes. Yeah, it was yes. Ver yes. Vernon Gibberth, Practical Homicides Investigation. Volume it's, 2. It's an eight-hour eight eight book. It's huge. Too. And it's got some funky yeah. photos inside that yeah. was scary. And my kid was like, I'm stop that. Shut that book. <laughs> um, the, you know, the one thing I want to say before we wrap up that's really, really important is you have to know out there, every, all the fans out there, and I, I see all your faces and you're, you're excited and having a great time. This is amazing. Every conversation we have up here, from the writer's room to on set to the cut to what, what airs, all we do is say, but the audience, what about the audience? How do we impress the audience? But is the audience going to be confused? And how do we wow them? Like every single conversation we have from the creation to the writing to the acting to post is all about you. We have the conversations every minute of every day for 16 years. And we are just simply here for you. And thank you. Wait, one more. I, I, we can't let them go without getting just a little teaser of what to expect from the two hour. Carol, will you take it away? Will you tee I, up what we'll. I think it should be Anthony. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, well, thank you. So, you know, we air on the 27th of September. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, nine o'clock. This guy's in it. Central. Um, it's going. There's going to be a, a large catastrophe in Las Vegas. It's going to paralyze the entire city. It will bring all of our cast members back to uh, one final case, where we'll answer all the burning questions that you all have, and you have to just stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Let's say goodbye. Well done. Well done. Say goodbye. Bye.